The Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma. Georgia votes in pivotal 2024 parliamentary elections with voter turnout at 58.9%. According to the CEC preliminary results released, Georgian Dream leads with 54.3% based on 3,085 precincts, which is around 99% of precincts that voted electronically, 90% of all precincts. The chair... The chairman of the CEC, Georgi Kalandarishvili, said yesterday in the last summary briefing of the day that the wide-scale use of electronic technologies made it possible to get to know the preliminary primary results within an hour and 45 minutes after the end of the voting. According to his assessment, the elections took place in a peaceful and free environment. Two opposition coalitions have stated in separate briefings that they are not recognizing the official preliminary results announced by the Central Election Commission. At the foreign exchange auction held on October 23, 2024, the National Bank of Georgia, NBG, sold 60 million USD at a weighted average exchange of around the rate of 2 and 71 uh, lari per USD. The bank traded three times at the foreign exchange auction in October and sold a total of 173 million USD. The bank states that the decision to hold the foreign exchange auction was made in order to prevent the excessive influence of non-fundamental factors and the excitement traditionally characteristic of the pre-election period in the currency market. Some global media headlines read the following at this stage. BBC, Georgia's pro-EU opposition says elections stolen as ruling party leads. The Washington Post, Georgia's Moscow-leaning ruling party leads in preliminary election results. Euronews, Georgia's ruling party celebrates victory, but it's unclear who will form next government. This is The Checkpoints. I'm Elena Gwangelashvili, author and the host of the show, and The Checkpoints team is ready to sum up business and economics week for you. New data is coming in at this uh, point uh, um, from the CEC, and we know that the PM Iraklik Obakidze has already summarized the results. We are um, on this new information and will sum up for you during live program a little bit later. Before that, let me remind you that the preliminary results released by the Central Election Commission on October 26 put the Georgian Dream Party in the lead at 52.9% uh, against a combined total of 38.4% received by opposition parties that crossed the 5% electoral threshold. The full preliminary re results are based on 2,206 uh, precincts, which, is 90, which was 97 percent of the precincts that voted electronically, 90 percent of all precincts, showed the Georgian dream as a winner. While all major opposition coalitions that had signed the president's Georgian charter passed the threshold, preliminary results showed their combined total below 40 percent. The Coalition for Change, which unites Ahali Girchi, More Freedom and Rua parties, was the strongest among the opposition with 11.2%, with the Unity to Save Georgia Alliance led by the United National Movement, the former ruling party finishing with 9.8%. Next came the Strong Georgia Coalition, led by Lelo for Georgia with 9.2%, and For Georgia, led by ex-Prime Minister Georgi Gakharia with 8.2% of the vote. None of the other parties 
crossed the threshold at the time. The chairman of the CEC presented these preliminary results yesterday in the last summary briefing of the day. According to Georgi Kalandarishvili, the wide-scale use of electronic technologies made it possible to get to know the preliminary primary results within an hour and 45 minutes after the end of the voting. According to his assessment, the elections took place in a peaceful and free environment. These results are changing and our reporter Georgi Aronia will give us a more updated picture soon. The thing is that 394, 547 Georgians, 11.2% um, of all registered voters were eligible to vote in the traditional non-electronic procedure. This including uh, 95,910 voters registered abroad while the rest were registered in remote mountainous or smaller precincts uh, where it was inconvenient to install new technology. This means that more than 10% of voters were eligible to cast ballots in traditional voting abroad and in Georgia's remote and mountainous regions. Final official results are expected um, uh, to be available today. They were available today, um, actually, um, after all ballots, both in electronic and non-electronic percents, uh, have been counted by hand. Uh, we have some updates from the New York polling. Head of our U.S. Bureau, Tamna Kemertelidze, worked for the checkpoints from New York. Let us hear some voices of those who had to stand in long lines to use their right and cast votes. First and foremost, I think that in any country, it doesn't matter you're Georgian or you are citizen of Italy, whatever, uh, the election day and your vote as a citizen is the most important thing that you, the right that you have from the Constitution. So, uh, obviously, coming to election day and showing your support to whatever party or person you support is the most important thing that you can do as a citizen of the country. Most importantly, for this election, I think it's one of the crossovers in Georgian history. So, I really think that it's very, very important that every citizen voted today and that like we have this free path to whatever Georgia, wherever Georgia wants to go and whatever is best for Georgia's development. Uh, for today, I was very emotional. I came with my two children, so I had tears on my eyes seeing all this crowd and thousands of people coming here. But then uh, I was shocked, and I'm still shocked. Like, I was literally shaking when I left the, the consulate. How are unorganized and how everything was a little mess. Because I didn't, didn't even know my registration number. So to find out my number, the only way was to see on the consulate website, but the West website was not working. The system was just shut. So uh, I was astonished finding out there. And then um, they just let me in uh, because I was with the kids. So fortunately, I was in the right building, right floor, and I found my number on the wall and I voted. But probably there are like tons of citizens like me coming here not knowing their registration number and nobody's here organizing the crowd, supporting people, helping them to get around. So only this for me is a big violation as a right of a citizen who comes here to vote and you don't provide any kind of support in order for citizens to vote. As from you as a Georgian citizen, these elections mean a... Uh, my country's ability to separate itself from Russia at last and go toward a more Aggressive and accepting environment because uh, I am a dual citizen of Russia and of Georgia. I have lived in Russia a lot of years of my life. I know what it's like there. I don't like it there very much. And I don't like my country that was forcefully occupied by Russia being essentially bought into uh, back into the Soviet Union by a billionaire who worked for his own gains. And because in my own country the uh, ruling party is so blatantly cheating and uh, undermining our democracy that uh, my hope is here under the supervision of the world's biggest democracy at least my vote can properly be counted to the future I want. So uh, I've been in this line for uh, three hours now. Uh, it was moving very quickly at the start but now it's in a bit of a roadblock and I intend to uh, stay until the end but for the consulate, it's decided to remain open past the initial uh, expected 8 p.m. deadline, and I intend to make use of that. 
I am fairly skeptical about uh, my ruling, our ruling party's ability to accept a fair democracy and fair election. So uh, my hope is that it's so obvious to everyone who's seeing these recordings, who's seeing all the people posting on Facebook, how many people in their country, in other countries, are voting very clearly not for the Russian party, essentially. And that if they refuse to acknowledge that clearly they're not winning by a landslide as they're claiming, that we can call them out, we can show them everything, and we can, if need be, take things into a less peaceful hand. Yeah, I'm sitting here also this morning. Uh, left home at 7 a.m. So yeah, 30,000 Georgians are standing here on 44th Street. With the hope to change something in our country. So, I don't know what are the numbers and answers now in Georgia, but we hope for the best, for changes, first of all. And changes are always good. Yeah, like Georgian people, since, uh, since last century, we, we choose the West. So, we have noble taste fighting against Soviet Union and the uh, actually, exactly the same is happening right now. Nothing really changed. So that's our hope. Um, yeah, we are Europeans, so we would like to be part of it. And with this government, that would be possible. Tamna Kemertelizem gathered these voices uh, for you. Uh, meanwhile, in Georgia, all the major opposition parties have responded to the preliminary results so far. Opposition coalitions, Unity UNM and the Coalition for Change leaders have announced in separate briefings that they are not recognizing the official preliminary results announced by the Central Election Commission yesterday. Representatives of both parties say these are the stolen elections. The parties are indicating several ways to allegedly rig the elections, such as manipulation of the verification system assisted by the registrators who were exclusively GD members, tampering with the marking multiple electronic voting by the same people in different precincts for which the GD used the personal information that it had collected by taking the IDs of the voters before the elections. Coalition Strong Georgia, Zilieri Sakartuelo, stated the results uh, did not reflect the will of the Georgian people against the backdrop of elections conducting with nationwide intimidation and bribery. Um, the announced figures contradict the historical and present-day choice of the Georgian people. This is strong Georgia's position at this point. Gakharia for Georgia also responded to the preliminary results in a briefing on alleged widespread violations on election day. Gakharia for Georgia highlighted several several violations that they say impacted the official preliminary results, including vote buying, the acceptance of spoiled ballots in favor of Georgian Dream, the distribution of pre-marked ballots, and the incidents of voters costing multiple ballots. Uh, the official position of the party is to wait for the final results, and at the same time, it plans to share detailed evidence of violations with local and international partners. My Vote, a local observer mission uniting dozens of Georgian civil society organizations, said it identified a large scheme to rig the 2024 parliamentary elections and will demand the annulment of the official results. According to My Vote, as of um, 10 um, to 11 p.m., the mission's observers identified 347 violations of the marking process, 89 reports of violations of the secrecy of the vote, 341 cases of unauthorized persons in the polling station and 96 cases of physical violence, threats and confrontations, as well as 163 cases of obstruction of my vote observers. Um, jail observers have recorded about 300 cases of bad practices in total for this stage of these 44 violations were described on the perimeter of the election precinct. Uh, uh, 51 notes uh, were 
were um, recorded in the record book, 37 were written in the precinct election commission and 21 complaints were made against the name of the district election commission. According to the report, Jaila observed the several cases of physical confrontations and disputes which contain signs of a number of crimes under the criminal code, including possibly obstruction of the will in elections. Jaila is monitoring the parliamentary elections of October 26, 2024 in 55 municipalities, 64 electoral districts at 15 foreign countries through 650 observers. The Jaila election mission covers more than um, 1,500 polling stations, which is about half of the total polling stations. Jaila is represented by both static and mobile observers at the polling station. They monitor the election process from the moment the precincts are opened and will remain in the precincts until the summary protocols of the voting results are drawn up. Also observers of 30 districts of Jaila in the respective districts will observe the procedures of receiving documents from different districts in the districts throughout the night. In addition, the Jaila mission will uh, study the summary protocols uh, of all the districts, which include both the districts uh, in the territory of Georgia and those outside its borders. This is the picture that we have so far coming from yesterday, the voting day. We'll update you by the end of the program with the updated information that we'll get from CEC and other parties. Before that, we can hear what were some of the expectations and assessments of what many called pivotal elections on October 26, 2024. We have collected business voices during our non-stop live coverage of the election day yesterday, and our reporter, Natia Taktakishvili, will sum up the main messages we all have heard so far from this part of the business community. Natia, what were the main messages yesterday stemming from our respondents? Eleni, we tried to find out the mood of the business during these important elections. Most of the businesses declare that Georgia's investment environment is at a risk. If relations don't improve with the USA and the EU integration process will not continue. As they note, the country needs coalitional government instead of a single ruling party. They deeply hope that the newly elected government will continue the pro-European path. We can listen to the business community voices we gathered yesterday. Revas Vashak is a founder of Chirina deeply hopes that after the elections Georgia will get closer to the European Union again. As he told BMG TV, no one expects it to happen in a day, as the country's reputation has been badly damaged. During the last two years, the government and parliament took decisions to distance Georgia from Europe and America. We had military relations with the USA for the last 30 years. Our financial supporters are the international banks in which the US has a major share and they determine this policy this is a big problem. As for the European Union, Georgian citizens have great relations with European countries. I mean both individuals and companies. If it happens that the visa regime is stopped, it will lead to big changes in Georgia. It's not only a problem that part of our population will find it more difficult to travel to Europe. There are now about half a million Georgians living in Europe, Fashakitsa said. Sviet Chumbur is the Secretary General of EU-GBC declares that single ruling party in Georgia should be replaced by a coalition government. As Chumbur is mentioned with BMG TV, Georgia does not have experience of coalition government, but the society will learn. For three decades, we had a one-party government. I am personally firmly convinced that the single ruling party should be replaced by a coalition government. This is the only solution. Someone may ask that we don't have the culture of a coalition government. Nothing is dangerous, we will learn, Chumburita said. According to him, in the current situation, the president should make the most of her opportunities in the process of forming a coalition government and also to settle bilateral relations with the European Union and the USA. The founder of ICR group, Kaha Hazaradze, said that he supported the changes in the elections. According to him, the historical choice of Georgia is Europe and to be a member of European family. 
The business cannot develop without changes when the country is ruled by one political party for 12 years changes are needed, Khazaradze said. According to him, there will be many changes in Georgia in 2024 and in this regard, the so-called Russian law became a turning point in relations with business partners. Our company represents about 30 international companies in Georgia. The first question we received from them was the following, why are you accepting this law? I had no arguments. We are building a democratic country, therefore it's very important to have democratic institutions in the country. It was very difficult for us to continue negotiations with our partners on new projects. Everything is paused and everyone is waiting for the choice of the Georgian people, Hazaradze said. Irakli Akhaladze, the founder of Habsheni, declares that the desire of business is to reset relations with EU since stability comes from there. According to him, what the business asks the state is their support. Sometimes taxes hit the business hard. We want to do everything in line with the legislation, but sometimes the situation becomes difficult. Our business is a construction business which is characterized by seasonality, so winter is a hard season and our business is affected by seasonality, he said. We have no alternative but integration with European civilization. We must return to this past quickly, Malhas Kunelauri, the founder of the company MK Development Group, told to a program Business Morning. According to him, business expectations is related to the changes that should lead the country to solid and steady political and economic development. Business expectations for the elections are positive, and positive, of course, means changes and steady and long-term solid development. We are waiting for the new parliament to return to the new past, said Kunelauri. Beka Bekaya, the founder of Nutrimax, declares that it's important to have European-time businesses instead of Russian-style money-making businesses. As Bekaya says, despite the tense background in the country, he has a positive mood. If we want to grow and have an inclusive economy, it's important to develop European-time business instead of Russian-style money-making businesses. That's why integration towards the European Union is important, said Beka Bekaya. Resan Kikawa, director of Expo Georgia, hopes that the country's foreign course will change under the new government. We had different types of government, including a government that started a civil war, a violent government, and a government that somehow decided to distance itself from all our main partners and turn away from the civilization we were striving for. I hope that the country's foreign course will change and investments will be made in the development of science, education, and healthcare system, he said while speaking with BMG TV. As he mentioned, he respects the choice of Georgian people and he hopes that it will be a step forward and not a step back. The managing partner of Company Dew declares that the most important thing for Georgia's investment environment is to repair relations with Western partners and restore the process of integration into the European Union. As Thomas Aushuri told BMDG, otherwise a number of investment projects and the country's economy in general will be at a risk. This is an extraordinary situation. Georgia has never had such a tense relationship with its traditional partners. We must get out of this situation and restore the process of integration into the European Union. I hope future government will continue the pro-European path in order to continue those investment projects that are interesting for both our domestic and foreign investors, Thomas Dow should be said. Our guest today, Fadi Asli, has already joined me in the studio of the checkpoints. We'll be discussing the preliminary picture that we have so far and try to analyze what comes next without the crystal ball, of course. Fadi, welcome to the show and thank you for your um, time. Did you expect these results, the primary preliminary results that we are seeing? I mean, I expected the results that were supposed to uh, be published, not the results that were manipulated by the Central Election Committee. Uh, I was pretty sure that the Georgian Dream would pull a trick at the last minute. I always wondered what was the trick, and obviously either they had hacked already the electronic machines and they used many other ways. So uh, it comes as a big disappointment, not for me, me, I'm an international businessman, I can re relocate myself in any country I want. 
but it comes to me as a disappointment for the Georgian people, for their aspirations, for their future, for their children, for their grandchildren. Unfortunately, Georgia has joined the grouping of uh, failed states like Russia and Venezuela and old and Belo, uh, Belarus. And uh, it is very sad because Georgia had a lot of potential. But unfortunately, you know, greed and uh, love of power and uh, corruption has eaten up this government. And this is the result. Um, are, are these uh, results uh, logical, uh, Fadi? I mean, uh, do you believe that after a Russian law, uh, after those protests in the streets, uh, um, I don't know, stopping the uh, Georgia from EU uh, membership, uh, after all these uh, steps, uh, the GD uh, could become um, as, as, as stronger as it was in 2012, when during all these elections, all uh, it would do was to lose, uh, lose votes? I mean, it's obvious that the results are manipulated. And there is a very interesting graph that I saw a little earlier before getting into the studio, showing um, uh, the historic uh, coincidence of uh, Edison research uh, exit polls with the real polls, with the real result, the final results of the elections. And you would notice that since 2018, in all the elections that happened, uh, the, the exit polls of Edison uh, Research were very close to the final results of the CEC. But if you look at the results of yesterday, the deviation is so huge that it is laughable. I mean, it's mathematically impossible. So, um, so it's obvious, you know, the elections have been rigged. And, uh, and of course, the Georgian dream cannot have the same popularity today that it had in 2012. I think that they are even more popular, according to the CEC, to what they were in 2012. So it's a whole uh, masquerade, unfortunately, uh, very typical of a failed state in a banana republic. And uh, we find ourselves today in a real banana republic. Now everything will, um, a, lot, a lot will depend on the assessment of the international organizations uh, who are watching the elections, mainly the OSCE, if uh, they uh, would uh, uh, speak the truth and not, and not um, undermine their own credibility they should not legitimize those elections. However, if they le legitimize the elections, then there is not much that can be done. Uh, uh, do you think it will be uh, easier to provide proof of this manipulation since these are um, already like partly electronic uh, um, elections? Uh, look, it is impossible to... Uh, it's very difficult, not impossible, unless you really have access to the machines, to everything, which will never happen because the Georgian dream will never allow any independent party to audit the machines. Um, so it is uh, very difficult to prove it. Yes, you can prove like carousel, you can prove like uh, bribing, because all of this is documented. But uh, hacking of the uh, machines is difficult to prove. Several months ago, I had published an article myself warning about the fact that electronic voting is very dangerous and that the uh, software and the hardware can be hacked. And at that time, the Central Election Commission had responded to me saying that that was not true, etc. But today it proves that it is true. We will see how it plays. You know, this time the stakes are very high. It's not like uh, 2020. Uh, we will see how it will play, but it will not have positive um, impact on the business environment, that's for sure. Uh, when, when you said that the stakes uh, are uh, high, not like in 2020, what do you mean precisely? I mean that, you know, I mean uh, the future of Georgia and Armenia are at stake now. It's not only Georgia, because if Georgia, you know, doesn't make it to the EU, Armenia will have very little chance to do it on uh, its own. So geopolitically, given what's going on in Ukraine, uh, the war, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the war, you know, I mean, uh, the West, 
are going to lose a pawn, an important geopolitical pawn, two pawns as a matter of fact, Georgia and Armenia. And that's why I'm telling you the stakes are much higher today than they were in uh, 2020. We will see how it plays. Yes, you, you mentioned business community in, in, uh, in which uh, context? The business, the, uh, yeah, the business environment. Yes, yeah. the business environment. Look, the first thing that will happen, and you will start seeing it tomorrow, the National Bank will start selling uh, huge amounts of dollars uh, to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, uh, protect the lari, okay, to stab stabilize the lari. Um, and I, in my own opinion, you know, it is said that in the past two months, the National Bank had sold about four to five hundred million dollars. We still don't know the right figure. Uh, but I believe that within 15 days, the National Bank will sell four five hundred million dollars uh, because now there will be a total state of panic, you know, people uh, with this kind of nebulosity where we don't know where we are heading and what's going to happen. People won't keep their money in Larry's. And uh, in my opinion, it is um, quite logical for the Larry to depreciate in the coming period. Uh, then you know, forget about foreign investment. No one is going to put a dollar in the. No new foreign investors will are going to put a single dollar in the country. Uh, most probably, there will be sanctions slapped on the authorities for cheating and uh, manipulating, uh, which will affect the economy even more. And as I told you, we have joined the uh, club of failed states, unfortunately. Oh, what uh, what can uh, make? Uh like to, to turn the situation at, at this point that you are uh, projecting uh, right now? Nothing, in my opinion, unless the Georgian Rim decides to leave power themselves. I, I don't see without another uh, government taking over, uh, nothing will change, you know. We're heading towards a very difficult uh, period for Georgia, unfortunately. Uh, Fadi Asli is in the studio of the Checkpoints, the only English language program on the Georgian media uh, landscape. Our reporter, Georgi Aronia, has been monitoring the updates and he will sum up the current picture around what many call the existential pivotal elections in Georgia to determine the future EU membership pass for, for Georgia. Let us listen to Georgi Aronia and then yeah. I will give you the final sure. word. Uh, Georgi. Uh, the floor is yours, and thank you for your efforts. Hi, Elena. So, good morning. Yesterday's parliamentary elections were a significant event in Georgia's political landscape as voters turned out to elect the members of the 11th parliament. Voter turnout was reported at 58.94%, with uh, 2,060,412 people participating, reflecting high public engagement. Turnout was higher than in 2020 and 2016 parliamentary elections, but still below the 2012 level, when the ruling party, Georgian Dream, first took office. Office. Male voter participation was recorded at 31.4%, while female participation stood at 27.5%. The highest voter turnout was seen in uh, Rajalechhumi, Ajara, and Guria, while the lowest participation was in Samagrelo Zemuswaneti at 55.3%. In terms of results, votes have been counted in 3,100 out of 3,111 districts, covering uh, approximately 99.6% of the total vote. Preliminary, preliminary results show the ruling party, Georgian Dream, leading with uh, 1,117,480 votes, or 54.08%. The Coalition for Changes, Guaramia, Melia, Girchi and Drua follows with 225,680 votes, representing 10.9%. Unity National Movement ranks third with, with 209,837 votes, or 10.1%, while Strong Georgia, Lelo for People for Liberty, follows with 180,424 votes, or 8.8%. Lastly, Gaharia for Georgia, led by Georgi Gaharia received 160,350 votes or 7.7%. Accordingly, the new parliament will consist of five parties that exceeded the 5% threshold with uh, the Georgian Dream receiving 54.08% of the vote, enough to form a government with approximately 90 seats. A simple majority, but not a constitutional one. Opposition leaders have voiced uh, dissatisfaction with the results, alleging election fraud. 
Another notable outcome is Georgian Dream's low level of support among Georgian citizens abroad, where it garnered only 15%, while leading opposition parties collectively received over 75%. Domestically, Georgian Dream received its lowest support in Tbilisi's Bakke district, with 38.04% of the vote, while its highest support came from Nino Tsuminda, Akhalkalake and Sachere, where it ranged from 84 to 88%. That's the information we have uh, so far. Back to you, Elena. Thank you. Thank you, Georgi, for updates. Um, Fadi Asli is uh, with me. Fadi, what, what, are the, what are the impressions and what is the main uh, message at, 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 at this uh, point to, to, to the voters, to the business community, uh, to GD even? Look, I will tell you, you know, I come from a country that is, um, has always been very turbulent, Lebanon. I'm Lebanese. And, you know, the business community has always strived, despite civil war and despite, you know, businesses will adapt uh, to any circumstance. Um, now, of course, it's going to be more difficult, especially if there are sanctions, then this will affect legitimate businesses, and then we will see the uh, arisal of, um, of illegitimate businesses that are close to the government that would uh, try to shortcut the sanctions, which is typical in every country that's under sanctions. So it's going to be a rough road. Some businesses will go bankrupt. New businesses will emerge. And this is how things go in uh, difficult times. Um, the reputation of Georgia has been uh, shaken very seriously. And now, depending on the assessment of the OSCE, we will see if the reputation of the OSCE will be shaken as much as the reputation of Georgia. Uh, do you, um, uh, what are your expectations? Do you think it will come to the point when um, OEC might declare um, these election results illegit? You know, as a matter of principle, I don't trust international institutions. As a matter, this is my personal philosophy. You know, those are bureaucrats who don't uh, give a damn about anything that's happening, that are uh, getting paid their salaries, and that don't want headache. Uh, they don't want to be in the middle of a tug of war or a middle of uh, confrontation. So, I don't know. I'm, I mean, they might legitimize the elections, which wouldn't surprise me, because they're an international uh, institution, you know. I mean, um, they don't care. You know, they simply don't care. They don't want to have headache themselves as people. And that's why they would legitimize it. Unless, of course, there are interferences from abroad. Let's see how it plays. Yeah. Um, if uh, we are um, uh, mingling with the crystal ball <laughs> uh, here mainly, uh, what could be some of, the, some of the scenarios that we might be expecting for, for Georgia's future development. You mentioned sanctions uh, several times and um, the, the highest stake is EU membership, of course. We might lose our uh, visa-free regime. It is a possibility. This means you and I, the honest people, will have to line up at the door of the embassies to get a visa. Uh, this is one thing. There might be uh, rallies in the streets, it is a possibility, but the bigger possibility is to see violence. Violence, like real violence, like assassinations, uh, people uh, beaten up, eventually uh, some public figure we know very well uh, thrown in jail and arrested. Um, there will be instability and violence, that's for sure. I mean, it doesn't take a crystal ball to uh, read it. Mm -hmm. You just need to use your common sense. Because also what you need to understand is the psychology of people. You know, when you are in a democracy and one side doesn't play by the democratic rules, you cannot accept, uh, expect the other side to keep playing by the democratic rules, you see. And that's why I'm telling you that I unfortunately foresee violence coming. Logic says this. It will be a very unstable period for Georgia that's coming that will affect the economy, that will affect businesses, that will affect the reputation of the country, its future aspirations. And uh, we will be put in the freezer for some time 
still uh, there will be a, some geopolitical changes uh, that would affect us positively, and then we will see what will uh, happen. But meanwhile, you will have a totally wasted generation. You know, those young people who are between uh, 20 and uh, 30 today and who have their future ahead, either they're going to emigrate or they're going to waste their future by being here just waiting for something to happen without anything happening. <clears throat> Do you think, uh, th does this picture have any other side that might be brighter that uh, maybe me, uh, me and you do not see. Yeah, you get this, used to pain. You get used to pain. That's the bright side. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Then, then uh, you know, if you're married, you see that the marriage is like an easy thing compared to this. <laughs> I mean, you know, you look, you will always see a bright side. You'll always say, thank you, I'm alive, I'm in a good health. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, I'm on a salary that is uh, okay. You know, your priorities will change, you see. You will look more into your own self, into your family, into your thing, and you will forget about democracy and big titles and the EU and all those things. And you will be like during Soviet times, where you know your personal uh, um, happiness and your little circle around you, you know, is very important. And that um, the d dictatorship outside, you live with it and you don't care. You know, you play by the rule of the games. This is where we are heading. But, but do you think there will be room for that? Because the dictatorship now and dictatorship back in the Soviet times, these are probably two different dictatorships. And do you think Georgia has resources, uh, uh, like financial, economic, whatever resources, to have this dictatorship to, to kind of like maintain and, and to feed this dictatorship? Yes, you know, I mean, um, you will always, you will have a kind of nomenclatura close to the Georgian dream who are making, who exists since years already, you know, the same business people around the Georgian dream who are making money. Then you will have a uh, shrinkage of the middle class even more. And then, you know, the poor people will remain poor for a very long time. And, you know, those poor people have been poor since uh, the Shevardnadze's time. And uh, for them, nothing will really change except suffering. Uh, then the Georgian dream will uh, give more money to the poor, you know, like subsidies, social programs to keep them like kind of, instead of raising everyone up with high salaries, everything, they will keep on subsidizing with social program those poor people to keep them kind of happy with five kilos of potatoes and tomatoes and 20 laris and uh, yeah. Do you think there could have been more effort not to have this type of uh, this type of results? Do you no, think? No. What can what can you do? You know, you have a uh, man who controls every single state institution, from uh, the prosecutor office to the courts to the ministries to everything. Okay. Um, what can you do, you as a citizen? Okay. You can go to court, you can uh, file a complaint at the prosecutor, you can uh, go complain to anyone. You have to just take whatever comes on your head. There is nothing. I think that the opposition played it very well. They did their utmost and they have proven that the majority of the Georgians don't want the Georgian dream. This everyone knows it. What the, the, the official figures, they're total bullshit, okay? No one believes them, okay? No one believes them. So it doesn't matter. We are jailed under the Georgian dream by force, by a dictatorship. It's a dictatorship. We, I mean, whoever says the Georgian dream is not a dictatorship is an idiot. Okay? It's a dictatorship. So we have to live under this dictatorship. There will be more uh, curbing of freedoms in the coming period. Uh, people who, are, who speak like me probably will be beaten up in the street, put in jail, uh, whatever. Uh, it will happen, okay? And we have to brace for it. Um, it's a dark period for Georgia that's coming. For Georgia, not for the Georgian dream uh, nomenclatura. It will be a golden period for them because they will be wealthier and uh, more prosperous with their families themselves. Yeah, but for Georgia, it is a dark period.
I don't want to believe in that. You have to believe. Picture, if you don't believe in this picture, you, you cannot I, change I think it. Maybe. Thank you so much. Fadi Asli, live in the checkpoints. Thank you for your participation. And that's all for today. We'll meet next Sunday. Something makes me think we will have a lot to discuss. Before that, keep with us up on BM.G. Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma.